Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 98. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 120 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, you look good today. Thank you. I feel good. I finished out the month, like the 21 days of prayer and fasting, like every day um, of the 21 days, there was like a Devo at church. Mm -hmm. Like you would go and if it was Monday through Friday, it was 630 that we had to be there. So today it was 9 a.m. So I felt like I got to sleep in and I almost skipped it. Almost. Almost. I was like, oh, well, we're about done. And I didn't want to have that like close enough. Right. Because sometimes in my past, I've been close enough right. on my goals. And I really wanted to to finish this race. And I'm really happy to, that I did. And I feel like it's adding to my countenance just to finish what I said I was going to do. You know how many times I do close enough on my diet lifestyle? Yes. Like, like my goal is 185. Oh, I'm 187. Close enough. Right. right? I mean, and you do. You have to follow through and get to that goal, get to the end. Oh, you have a cute little bit of something right there. What is that? Let me get it. <laughs> I think it was a little bit of your protein shake from this Probably. morning. <laughs> yeah, I started off my morning with a scoop of collagen and a raw egg and eight ounces of um, almond milk along with water and ice. And I mix it all together in the Vitamix and... It's a nice, thick, frothy shake. I was going to say, it's um, it's a different morning drink. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm getting used to it. I'm not used to having something in the morning, but I'm just, I, I try to spread out all that protein throughout the day. Now, I do see that we got mail, which you refuse to show me what I it want, is. I want to get your actual reaction to this. I don't know if I want my actual reaction. So we got a couple of really sweet things. First of all, we got two cards. One mm -hmm. is from uh, Kurt and Rachel. Okay. Thank you so much. This beautiful card. Oh, that is pretty. Right? Like, that's so pretty. And it says, thinking of you with a grateful heart. And it just says, guys, so thankful for all that you do. You are a huge blessing to me and our community. All my love, Rachel oh, in South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you for that. I love that. I mean, this, it just means so much. Those handmade cards, I know you can get, like, the kits I'd still screw those up. Oh, there's no way. I've tried. Like, that is so pretty. I would still screw that up. You'd get it with, like, the whole piece pasted on sideways. Or I would have, like, dirt prints all over it. Because my hands are always dirty, no matter what I do, right? <laughs> that sounds terrible. But, yeah, and, and I'm a lefty. I always smudge everything. As hard as I try. And this beautiful card is from Renee. Aww. Parrothead Renee. She says, thank you both for your constant love and support for me and my pup, Jolly. I am beyond blessed to have you guys in my daily life. You have brought me many smiles, new friends, and often much comfort at the end of rough days. Much love, Renee and Jolly. That's and, so awesome. And it's um, Jolly's new and improved paw prints. So thankful for Jolly and, and for Renee. And thank you for taking such good care of that beautiful fur baby. Okay, so that, that big package over there is not two cards. That is not the cards. And this one didn't come with a card, so I have no idea who sent this to us. Uh oh Usually that's, like, not a good sign. It's a fear factor. Okay. It is canned bacon. Okay. Canned bacon. I can get behind that. I never even knew that Yoder's made this bacon with smoke flavor Okay, added. so that just makes me think of From, from Rich or Poor with Kirstie Alley and Tim Allen. Like Yoder. the Yoder's. Okay, so... I don't have my glasses. Uh, pork, water, salt, sugar, smoke flavoring, sodium phosphate, sodium erythrobate, sodium nitrate, zero carbs. Yeah, zero carbs. Okay, so Three we will slices. do this. We will do this in uh, our fear factor. Three slices to a serving, which means that I feel like we're going to get some real slimy 
slices something. And look at this poor thing. This looks like a zombie apocalypse can. It doesn't sound like it's slushing around, so. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I'm so. excited about that. So yeah, thank you. If you're new to our channel, we do this thing called Keto Camping Fear Factor. So when we go camping, we take different items that you guys have sent in that a lot of people probably wouldn't eat. Usually we wouldn't eat it either. A lot of times we won't eat it. Or they don't even know, like I don't even know that these things exist until you send them. Yeah. Maybe we're gonna find something that's like totally awesome you that we're gonna use all yeah. the time. Yeah, so we basically do it as a fear factor thing. It's gotta be shelf stable for you to send it in. If we find something that's not shelf stable, we'll add it in, but yeah. don't mail us shelf stable stuff. Non-shelf stable stuff. There's an address down below. Anything you send us, we do have to do. Now we do have a couple of camping trips coming up and then that might be it for a couple of months because I actually just got off of my Zoom call for lacrosse and the lacrosse season is starting on February 15th. Thank you, Lord. And yeah, my assigner is not going to be really happy when I block out three days in the very first week of the season, but we already have a trip planned to the Keys. And that place takes a year to get that reservation. So, uh, sorry, Wait. not passing that one up. It's one of those happy wife, happy life things. Yeah. Like, if you canceled the Key West trip, like, my wife is not going to be Well, happy. I'm not doing Key West. I have a thing about driving all the way to Key West. I have this fear of getting stuck on a one-way in, one-way so out is road. Marathon? That is like it's it's in that area yeah everything there is key west to me yeah. i'm sorry no but that's not even halfway we're not even going halfway to key west it counts for me it's close enough <laughs> as we have said so yeah so but yeah so that, that means that pretty much um the whole month of march and hopefully the whole month of april or at least half of april all of march and half of february like i will be doing lacrosse every single day because wow. they're already we were always been short on officials and now we really can be short on officials especially if somebody's not feeling good you have to take yourself off of the game and all that kind of stuff but i am excited to finally get back out on the field because on a high school game we run slash walk because you don't run the entire game but you walk up and down and run up and down the field three to five miles per game wow and anthony and i because we are so short on officials tend to do almost two games every single day, five days a week, and then five on Saturday. So wow. I'm, I, I'm excited to get back out on the field, to add that into my workouts that I'm doing with Bronson. And I feel like come the end of April, I'm going to be at my goal of 10 pounds down in fat, 10 pounds up in muscle. And maybe I'll look like a little bit like Bronson. <laughs> wow. Well, I like you just the way you are, just so you know, just so we have that out there. But I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about those goals. And I am really thankful that as we near the end of January, I have proved to myself once again that I can stick to something. Yeah. I can do what I say that I'm going to do. And as you're entering into lacrosse season, I definitely want to continue incorporating movement. And so as I'm not getting up every morning to have to drive to church, I'm going to replace that time with a walk and just be moving. Right. And that's going to be my commitment. I know I can do it because I got up every single morning. So I, I can continue with this. So I'm going to do my morning devotions and then go for a walk. And the way that I'm going to have accountability for myself is... I'm going to take a picture of something that I see on my walk and post it on Instagram. I like that. And that way I can say like I've done it every single day and yeah. followed through. Now we still have actually nine more days in our fast. Yeah. So, and, and um, it's getting harder and harder to go into our discord see and those harder recipes. and harder to go onto our Facebook to see this because the end is near, right? This is back down to what we were talking about before where it's like, Close enough, and I'm kind of like close enough, but I gotta follow through all the way to the end of the month because yeah. usually I only do 21 days for the month, and this year I decided to do the entire month, and uh, so it's a little bit more challenging. But we do have a great plan for breaking our 31 day from food fast after bone broth, after bone broth, bone broth first, and then yes, we have. Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, we're going to go to Texas Roadhouse and in get our a prime line rip. of sight. Yes. But yeah. I'm excited about that. But it's interesting, like you say, 
this whole month it's been fine. Right. Like when you, when you're not even thinking about food and you and you're like the the finish line is so far off, you're just do making good decisions. Right. But it's interesting that it's like all of a sudden your mind starts working against you like, "Oh, well you're nearing, you know, no one would know if you didn't follow through." Right. But right. I would know. That's right. I don't want to disappoint myself. Yeah, and it, it's just been nice to kind of take out of like the picture, like you're not allowed to have anything for keto, but keto child this month. Like it just, it's kind of like a refocus Done. and it's been good. Yeah. So, speaking of keto chow, I, where's my phone? Okay. So there's no flavor of the week on keto chow this week. And I got this text from Chris instead. All right. So on Tuesday, okay, Tuesday. on Tuesday. I like Tuesday. Okay. So if you're watching this when it comes out, it's tomorrow. Manana. Okay. So, and today's date is what? The 23rd. So that would be on the 26th. So on February okay. 26th, if you're watching it later, they're going to have a special sale. It is a friends and family sale with special discounts. We're friends now, and family. If you use our link below, that'll take you to the page. It won't give you an additional discount on top, but it does help support the channel. So we really do appreciate it if you, Thank you. use the link down below to get to the special sale. But there's going to be different discounts. And some of the items on the Keto Chow website are going to be 20% off. Some of them are going to be 30% off. Wow. Some of them are going to be 40% off. And some of it's going to be 50% off. Jeez. He will not tell me. Can you believe this? I can't believe what it. What the sale is. Just that some are 20, some are 30, some are 40, and some are 50. I think he knows that I'd probably I was want to say, say something because I try to save everybody money. Well, and also that you would are, like line your stuff up in the queue. Well, that would definitely be the case. But yeah. that's a, <laughs> it's the point. Right. So, yeah. So, starting on Tuesday, the 26th. I don't I think the sale is just the week. Um, so, no flavor of the week. But... Again, our link always makes a flavor of the week because our link is going to give you 10% off your entire purchase instead of one flavor. But if you need to get something, hold off till tomorrow because I don't know what the sale is. I don't know if it's everything is at least 20% off or if it's only some things. Yeah. He just said some stuff is 20, some is 30, some is 40, and some worth is Worth the wait. So it's worth the wait. Wait one extra day. Yeah. And then use our link to get over to their site and find out what all the cool sales are. So what else is going on? I think we have to give away a keto brick package, oh, if I'm not mistaken. Do you want to give this away now, or do you want to give it away after comments? Because if we give it away now, they're not going to watch for the comments. Yes, they will, because the comments are so inspiring. You're going to need that for next week okay. to stay on track. Okay. So, if you watched last week's keto brick, uh, or last week. If you watched last week's Keto on the Couch, right. we're giving away a set of keto bricks. Now, a lot of people did message us, like, what is a keto brick? So we have several videos on our channel about it, uh, including one on how to melt this down, which I will leave a Super link helpful. right over here because most people don't eat this in a sitting. I've gotten to the point now where like I take a giant bite or I'll eat usually a half of one throughout the day or a whole one, but throughout the day. So it's I'm not into melting it as much as I used to be because I use it more for meal replacement, mm -hmm. but some people just use it as like a fat bomb or like a way to add a little bit of extra calories and fat to their meal with by good, having a little bit. With good ingredients. So what they do is they take this and they melt it down into eight to 10 servings. So mm -hmm. check out that video on how I do that. Um, so what this is, the thousand calorie meal replacement bar. A this thousand. is not a candy bar. Don't buy these thinking this is going to be sweet like, you know, you're buying a Lily's chocolate chip bar. No. It's not. It's a meal replacement bar with perfect keto macros, 80% fat. Um, each one is a little bit different in how many carbs, like, but I think at the most, the most is like 13 or 12 total carbs. And the newer flavors, like the chocolate peanut butter, are now made with whey protein instead of pea protein. Nothing wrong with pea protein. No. But the whey protein, I think, tastes better. And so I'm glad he switched over to that. So we've got, what are we giving away? We've got, what flavor is this one? We've got toasted almond coconut. Toasted almond coconut. We've got a peanut butter, which is probably my favorite. It's really good. Chocolate malt, another, I don't Very know, way good. up there favorite. Probably those are almost tied. This one is the original mocha, I think. Oh, no, cookies and cookies cream. Cookies and cream crunch. Here's the original mocha. Mocha cream. And then here is a coconut, coconut cream. cream. So, yeah. So, we're giving away all six of these. Picking out of the comments from last week. And, uh, yeah, I know they got they re-released the chocolate peanut butter sold out. Yeah, it's so good. Everybody needs to write to Robert and say, bring back maple pecan. Yes, that's Because that flavor was favorite. insane. And that yeah. would absolutely be my 
favorite, favorite, favorite. I've only got like eight left, so I've got them hidden even from myself because <laughs> I'm cherishing those. It's so funny. I remember when I thought nothing is ever going to taste as good as mocha cream. Right. Like, I'm never going to like anything more than this original keto brick. And it's like every single time there's a new flavor, I'm like, okay, well, I'm abandoning the last flavor that I love so much. Now, these Crazy. are, I will say, if you are going to buy them, there's a link down below if you want to buy these. Um... I highly suggest not buying one. I understand if you really want to try it, maybe reach out to some other people yeah. in our community down below and say, hey, would anybody consider selling me one or doing something? Because if you buy one, it's 12 bucks because right. you're paying for shipping, okay? Whereas if you buy a week supply, it's $50. So that's a huge difference. You're dropping from $12 a bar to like $7 a bar. Yeah. And if you buy a two-week supply, it's 90 bucks. So you save even more and I know you're going to say, like, that sounds like a lot of money. It's like six fifty a brick when you buy 14 of them. That's 1,000 calories. It's 1,000 calories. calories. It's 1,000 healthy calories. It's 1,000 calories of good, clean ingredients. So think about going to Five Guys and you can't get a burger for 6 bucks. No. And it's not nearly as clean ingredients. So just that's something to think about. I mean, and a lot of us... The kids go to the store and buy a candy bar. That's two fifty, and that's only like two hundred calories. Exactly, right? and, and garbage, and it's garbage sugar. Let's give these away, okay? All right. Okay, so we've got our random comment picker. Pick a winner. Pick a winner. I already got the URL in here. You you first put the wrong thing in, and it said pick a toilet. I know. I, that's from when I was looking for bidets last Would year. Would you? It's randomly just still in my history. Pick a toilet. That's kind of funny. All right. Can we pick a winner yes. here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fetch. Anything goes. Anything goes. How many people want to try keto? 125 brick? unique comments. Here we go. Pick a winner. And the winner is Peggy, Peggy Dilemma. She says, so fun to look at new RVs and all the cool stuff. Thanks, you guys. Love you both. Well, we love you too, Peggy. Congratulations. Okay, so Peggy, here's what you need to do. Send us an email at joe at twocrazyketos.com. And these are coming from me. So this, this, and just so anybody knows, Every month they send me a few bricks because we do talk about keto brick and um, we, we already buy our own. So I, the ones they send me, I ship off to you guys. So make sure you subscribe to our channel for future keto brick giveaways. Perfect camping food. I love them for camping. Now they do, they are shelf stable for like up to two years, but they don't last in that the long. heat, they will get a little soft, but you can, I store them in the well, refrigerator I mean, we like if we go camping or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to get into comments and things like that? Yes, but should we take a commercial break first? Yeah, we'll take a quick commercial break right now. Welcome back. Okay, so this is the part of the show where we get into our comments from last week as well as our subscriber of the week, which all comes from our Facebook family group. Join it. So, yeah, if you're not a part of it, go join it. There's a link down below. There's also a link down below for our Patreon as well as our Discord. Yes. And if you want like somebody to chat with right now, go in there there's almost always somebody in there sharing recipes just kind of lifting each other up encouragement having nice conversations it doesn't even necessarily have to be keto make a friend the only thing we ask in a discord is be nice be courteous <laughs> and don't like put pictures and things of things that may trigger people right. like candy bars that yeah. aren't keto that kind of stuff just kind of be conscious of other people and everybody is in a different part of their journey. Yeah. So this week we have our adjunct professor of the week, which is somebody who's putting up stuff that is super inspiring. And this week is actually Michelle. Hey, Michelle. And Michelle is actually one of our newer sub uh, subscribers in the group from like Welcome. back in November. Immediately came in and I just put up what she's got here. It says, what are your keto eats and treats? Because what Michelle is doing is every day, she goes in and she's like, it's like an accountability thing. What are you guys eating today? I love like, that. Like, what are you snacking on today? Are you staying on plan? And I love that encouragement. She, she came into our group, took the bull by the horns, and like, what can I do to help encourage other people? And I love that. Me too. And it's necessary, right? I mean, honestly, I love the fact that as a family, we can come together and provide support and it be free because mm -hmm. that's really a lot of times when you join some sort of like Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem or you're Jenny Craig, support group. you're really paying for the support group, right? Right? Because I could probably figure out like just eat barely any food. That's that's the message. <laughs> but you 
want that support and that accountability. So yeah, I mean, if you you're somebody who's like me, who has a problem with sneak eating or just not in full disclosure sharing, come into this safe space and go ahead and answer that question. Right. Like no one's going to judge you and no one's going to get after you. It just provides some, you know, accountability and you can bring to light what you're struggling with. Right. I mean, it's the same thing like with chronometer. If you struggle with things, you can get up in the morning and actually log all of the food that you're going to eat for the whole day yes. ahead of time in chronometer. This way, when you go to eat, you can look in there and be like, what am I allowed to eat? Like there yeah. is no negotiation because you have already determined that morning or a lot of times Rachel even does it the day before. This is what I'm allowed to eat. This is all I'm allowed to, not I'm allowed to eat and I can't go off of this list. So sometimes that kind of stuff will help you with accountability. It will. And then you have somebody like Michelle in there going, hey, like let's all do it together. So yes. I love that. Thank you. Now, uh, we don't have a subscriber of the week this week. How? Because nobody put up their success story in our group this week. I know people are having major success. Yeah. I mean, it's January. So please do us a favor, go into our Facebook family group and put a success story in there. No matter what it is, if you've been on keto for a day, a week, a month, a year, five years, some kind of success you've had, you can put a little bit of picture, a, a, a short little story, not a really long one because then it's like kind of difficult to read on, to create, on uh, keto on the couch, but just a little thing like, hey, this is a success I've had because there is somebody out there right now that is going through what you went through or what you're going through and they think they're alone. Yes. And when you share your story, it inspires them. Yeah. And that's why we like to do this. I mean, it's not like we need content. We want it because we want to celebrate your wins and also help other people get to their wins. Don't wait until you get to your goal. Right. Your goal is to stay on plan every single day. So you've achieved that. Like I'm going to give you a little secret. If you've had a day, 24 hours where you've stayed on plan, we want to celebrate it. I'm going to give you a little secret. Okay. You're never at your goal. No. Right? Because when you get to your goal, you know what you need to do? Set another goal. Right? So don't look at it as like this is the finish line because when you get to your finish line, you need to set another finish line. You know, maybe you get to your weight loss goal that you want, but now find something else. I want to achieve a better health in this area or I want to exercise because when you get to that goal and you don't set a new goal, you know what happens? Go backward. You start getting complacent and you're like, next thing you know, that scale's going back up. Believe me, I know, I've done it. Yeah, so me too. I'm, I'm telling you, like, don't wait till you get to the end. Share what's going on now and that'll help you get forward as well as other people. So because we don't have a subscriber of the week, mm -hmm. I actually have another Keto College adjunct professor of the week. Okay. And that is gonna be Francine. Hey Francine, she says, would just like to point out an overlooked result of keto bad behaviors that we have overcome. What unhealthy habit are you not doing anymore? I love that, I right? Love that is that. so awesome. Yeah, it's really good for us to kind of contemplate that. Thank you for putting that prompt out there because not only can we share it between ourselves, but you can also sit down and journal it. Yeah, so what would yours be? Like what is something that you have overcome? Definitely boredom eating is something that I really just don't do anymore. I found other things to fill that because I'm conscious of um, eating in between meals. Before keto, you know, that sad American diet always had you eating five, six, seven small meals a day. But since keto, you know, I don't eat a million times. And so it kind of naturally worked out some of my boredom eating, which I'm glad because right. I wasn't even enjoying it because you're not really even paying attention. A lot of times you're like watching TV mindlessly eating and it's not something that I wanted to keep doing. Okay. What about you? Oh, um, you know, keto's helped me overcome a lot of things. When I think about food wise, just overcoming like my sweet tooth. Cause I, I never was a big cake kind of eater, but I was yeah. always like, I did always want like a candy bar or something like that. But I think more importantly for me, what it's really helped me overcome is two important things for me. Is number one, a poor self-image. Like I've always had a very poor self-image wow. of myself because I've always been overweight my whole life. So I always looked at myself as the fat kid. And I struggle with it still. It's something I'm still working on because yeah. I look in the mirror and I, I see the fat Joe. it's a lifelong thing. But more importantly, I think what keto has really helped me to realize and overcome is that I can hit my weight loss goals, that I can yeah. reach my goals. So as somebody who has dieted his entire life since he was a kid, I always did have that good enough. I'm right. close enough. I mean, I remember 
way back in college going to Nutrisystem when they still had stores. This was before like the prepackaged stuff that you can buy like a month's worth of supplies. Right. right. They actually had counseling and you would go in and weigh in and stuff. And I remember, I distinctly remember my goal at the time being 230 pounds. And this was coming from like 260, yeah. right? And when I got to like 235, I was like, yeah, good enough. I'm in the right? vicinity. Good enough. Like I'm sort of there. Yeah. Like, and being on keto, it's helped me to really realize like I can get all the way to my goal. I mean, and I always did have that attitude of, like you're never going to get to that size. There's like, a plan to fail. When you're a 42, if your 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 thing is is like 38 is so far away, like right. you're never going to get into a 32, which is where I'm at now. So like even getting to a 38 would have been an accomplishment, and generally I would have gotten to that 38 and then stopped. And I'm sure it's the same thing for women, right? I'm sure like oh, if absolutely. you're an 18. Just to get to a 14 would be an accomplishment. Like, did you ever think you were going to be a size two? No. And I mean, I was in a size 24. Okay. And really stretching the boundaries of that. And yeah, there was, and, and there was always, like you're saying, I was always working out in my mind, like, there's going to be some degree of failure. And that was really, I think those those thoughts are really motivated by the addiction mm -hmm. because you're giving yourself an out because you're giving that bad behavior and the bad foods an in. Right. And giving sanctuary to those negative thoughts. It wasn't being nice to myself to say like, when you fail, it'll be okay, baby. No. Like we need to say like, Rachel, you can take this. You can be the Olympic medalist of your own goals. Right. Like don't like stop short keep going. Right. We can do this. I, I am worth the investment because I'm going to take this all the way to the finish line. Right. Yeah. I like that. And that is why we have our Facebook group, right? Yeah. That is why we have our discord so that there are people and they're going, Rachel, you can do this. So and, make sure you're going and signing up for that. And it's okay that we challenge each other. Don't take that as like a negative thing when someone says, don't stop. Right. Keep going. That's that's not somebody being mean. That's like a coach cheering you on that you can get better. And I know that you can, you can see this all the way through. Yeah. So let us know down in the comments, what is something that you have overcome since starting your keto journey? And again, that could be a keto journey that started a week ago or a day ago. Is there something that you've overcome? I remember at the it, it's just like any other addiction program, right? Getting through the first week going, this is the first week in five years that I haven't had a candy bar, right? That's huge. So that's a huge accomplishment. So let us know something down below in the comments. Let us know what is something that you have overcome since starting your keto journey. Yeah. You want to get into the comments? Yes, please. Okay, so the first comment is going to be from Audrey. Hey, Audrey. She says, glad to see you've joined the egg in the drinks club. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, Rachel, your hair looks great. Well, thank you, Audrey. I, I'm enjoying playing with my new hairstyler thing. For $25, I feel like every day is salon day. So if you don't know what Audrey's talking about is that I have started incorporating more eggs. I put an egg in my coffee. It's not as bad as you think. It's not. You need to try it. Once we're done with our fast, I'm telling you, you're going to like it. Okay. It's actually super healthy for you because you're getting a lot of vitamins and stuff that you can't get once you cook the egg. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. So next one is from Jen. Hey, Jen. And Jen said, I'm with you, Rachel. I couldn't do any eggs in my coffee. It's like frog legs. I'm sure they're delicious. I just can't get past the thought <laughs> of Rocky. Like, I have got to stop picturing Sylvester Stallone. It's not quite the same. And it running out the sides of his mouth. It's, it's not quite the same. Now, a lot of people do have messaged us this week and uh, with a couple of things. Number one, they want to know how I'm making it. Because there are actually, if you Google like egg in your coffee, there are a lot of recipes. A lot of them involve sugar. Some people actually put it in with the coffee grounds because you are oh. picking up a lot of amino acids, most of which comes in that yolk. Very interesting. And the yolk actually acts as an emulsifier. So no matter how you do it, the best way to do this is you want to put it in a blender. You are not going to like, I think what you're picturing is taking an egg, dropping it in your coffee and drinking yeah, it. Yeah, and seeing it no, stall. You've got to put it in a blender because now that yolk is going to act as an emulsifier and it becomes very rich and creamy it and looks, you don't taste the egg. It looks like coffee with milk in it. It's, it exactly. turns into that. It's not like it separates again like oil and vinegar and looks weird and gross. Like, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, and again, when you cook egg yolks, you lose a lot of vitamins that you can't get unless you're having it raw. Now, the downside is there are a couple of small studies that say that you actually, when you have raw egg yolk, you okay. don't get as egg white, you don't get as much protein. Like, you get more protein on a cooked, it's kind of weird, right? It is. You get more protein, and again, there's only a couple of studies Could about you that. separate them? Right. <laughs> Cook one well, that's, half. Well, that's what eating an over easy egg is, right? You're cooking the protein, so you're getting, you absorb like 90% of the protein, and it's the most complete protein you can eat. But then you're having the uncooked egg yolk. No. Which now you're getting all of the vitamins there. That's why even Dr. Barry says, like, make sure, like, you should eat those yolks as runny as you can stand them. Nope. Because you get more stuff. Put it in my Th coffee. That's why you do it this way. Put it in my coffee and cook the other part, please. Okay, so the other question that we have been getting a lot of is, am I concerned about raw eggs, consuming raw eggs? Because we're raw. all taught, like, don't eat your eggs raw, right? Yeah. Okay, well, I am not. For a couple reasons. Number one... Half of our eggs are actually coming from the chickens in the backyard. We know them. We know them. And what we're feeding them. We know what we're feeding them. But not all of our eggs are coming from them because we go through over a dozen eggs a day between the two of us and they only give us four to six eggs. So we Step do have up, to go ladies. buy more eggs. You know what that's telling me? We need more chickens. Listen to this, man. We need more chickens. What's four more? Like you already have six. What's four more? They may want to just stay the babies. You get more babies, they won't be the babies anymore. But then they can have babies to take care of. Listen to this. Don't Listen you think that would be a good idea? Shouldn't we get more chickens? Let us know down in the comments. Should we no. get more chickens? I feel like we should get more chickens. I feel like I feel like we need like ten more chickens. I love how cute you are when you're wrong. You're adorable. <laughs> okay, back back to the raw egg thing. So we do purchase eggs from the grocery store as well. And so as far as those, the other reason I'm not concerned about consuming raw eggs is because the chance of getting salmonella from your eggs is so small. Like, I think they say it's like one in 30,000 eggs. Isn't that how much eggs we use? <laughs> Close. Close. But what it is is really the salmonella for the most part is on the shell. Oh. You're not eating the shell. Okay. Huh. So a couple of things you can do is... When you're going to have a raw egg, like when you're going to have your raw egg in your coffee, crack it on the countertop. Don't crack it on the edge of your coffee yes. because now you could be could right. you could be putting the salmonella on your coffee cup, right? Okay. So I crack it on the countertop. And if you're gonna separate them, don't do the back. Don't go back and forth. This is more shell you, time. You can put it in your hand if you want. Make sure your hands are clean, obviously. But like that's how I like to do. It. I think it's easier. Just dump the egg into your hand. Let the white run through your fingers, and you grab the yolk. But okay. again, make sure your hands are clean. Right. Or you can do like that little bottle trick, right? Where yeah. You suck it up to with the bottle. the bottle. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So the salmonella is going to be on the shell. So where you really are risking is getting the shell in your drink and having that and also having it sit out for a long time because the salmonella needs, especially if you're storing your eggs in the refrigerator, yes. the bacteria will start growing when you have it sitting on the counter. So don't put a raw egg on the counter, and leave it there leave. for a couple eh. of hours and no. then come back. You want to crack it that. and consume it right away. Yeah. So, and then when you're talking about mayonnaise and things like that, the lemon juice and all that, that is going to like help to get rid of all that. Which so, is why you add it. I'm not really worried about it at all. And also a lot of the eggs in the stores, they're already heat treating them so you don't have to worry about it either so it's just not something i concern myself with like the more studies is like it's not in the egg so much is it's, it's of, in the outside and a lot of times the salmonella when people do like cake or cookie but it's the flour yes so yeah you have a greater chance of getting salmonella poisoning going out to eat or if you've ever consumed flour, like how many of us like ate raw cookie dough or raw yeah, cake it's batter? The flour, not the, the flour egg. was the issue, not the egg. So it's just something to be aware of. I don't worry about it at all. But it, everybody has to make their own health decisions. Yeah, we're not doctors or lawyers or nurses or anything yeah. like that. Everything we talk about when it comes to health, our own is experience, personal experience, or things we've learned, and we're kind of passing along. But please don't take anything we say as medical advice, no. right? Uh, so next one is going to be from Yummy Sweet. Hey, Yummy Sweet. Said, love your channel. What is your opinion on Built Bars? Do you still recommend them or not? Kindest regards from Germany. Germany. Okay, so Built Bars. They have changed their formulation. Mm -hmm. We have not tried the new formulation. Um, 
I don't believe we are even an affiliate anymore of them. Nope. We don't recommend them. Whether or not they actually lower, or in, whether or not they increase your blood sugar or not, the reason we don't use them, the reason we don't recommend them anymore has nothing to do with ingredients or if we think it's a bad product because I honestly haven't looked at the new ingredients. No. It's, they're dangerous in yeah. our house. The, and if I'm having a problem with it, then I think other people will really have a problem with it. And I'm not trying to police anybody's keto journey at mm -hmm. all, but they are very much like a candy bar. Mm -hmm. And I am not looking to work in more candy bars into my life. It's 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 really, you can overconsume those. Yeah. And I don't see them adding any real nutritional value to my life. So I gr it's great that they're delicious and they're fun, but I really feel like it's a problem for me and I don't want to have a problem in my house right. for myself. Why am I trying to create an obstacle for myself? And um, yeah, so that's why we kind of let Yeah, go so that. we're not saying not to have them if you want to have them and you can control yourself. Right. That is completely fine. Again, we have not tried the new formulation. They have never sent us any of the new ones and I don't want to buy them because I'd have to buy a whole box. Right. And what we found was they were so close to a candy bar, there wasn't eating just one. There was right. eating a box over three or four days. Yeah. And it's just too much of a trigger. In fact, somebody actually messaged us on the glucose test that I did on the old formulation and said, why are you saying these are dangerous if you don't have an increase in sugar? And it's because in my opinion, and for me, and, we, and Rachel found out for herself personally, it can just trigger you to, number one, want to snack more. Number two, want to eat more of them. And number three, possibly, if you're especially early in your journey, want to go back to a regular candy bar because you're like, oh, well, this. And, you know, they do give you some protein, but so do a lot of other products. And sometimes it's just hamburger. it may just be better to eat something maybe not so delicious to get that extra protein where it could trigger you to have something bad. So again, Nothing wrong with them. Again, haven't tried the new flavors, the new formulations. We're not telling anybody not to have them, but that's why we don't promote them. We don't generally promote something that we wouldn't consume ourselves, and that's why we don't promote them anymore. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Deborah. Hey, Deborah. She says, I think it is important to exercise along with weight loss. It helps in so many different ways, especially energy. That is absolutely true. The only thing that we always say is like, exercising to lose weight without any kind of diet, that is never gonna work long term. That's in my opinion anyway, because it's not sustainable. Like right. you, it's, and I think we've both done this. Like I had a piece of cake, I gotta go jump on the treadmill for four hours. I have absolutely done exactly that. Like exercise for four hours following like eating something that I'm like, that was off plan. Yeah. And, and, but I think that exercise is another layer of I can do this mm -hmm. because I think I was so heavy for so long, you sort of took for granted, like, well, I'm heavy. I, of course I don't exercise. Of course I don't move. Like, that's not what heavy people do. Right. And I like the fact that when I move and I exercise or we go, like when we were at the Tampa RV show and we were, you know, it was like five, 10 miles a day and feeling the success of I do that, it removed me one more layer from being that person that can't do that. Right. That that doesn't do that. And I feel like it is a victory. So that's more about why I want to do it, especially mm -hmm. this year, is I don't like putting myself into that classification of people who don't exercise because I can't. Right, right. You know, I want to do it. Yeah. So where exercise is good is cardio, great for the heart, great to give you some more energy. And lifting, and this is why you need to do both. I mean, and like I've been talking about Bronson a lot about like the most important thing if you're trying to lose weight is actually building muscle. But what happens is a lot of people don't want to build muscle because they don't they want to lose weight. And that's what Bronson said. Right. Bronson said to me, like, listen, my goal is for you to drop 10 pounds of body fat and then have 10 more pounds of muscle over like a six month period. Now, what does that say on the scale? your weight doesn't change at all, right? right? Your My weight would not change, but my body composition is gonna change. And you know what that allows you to do? It allows you to eat more food. Like I think That's you like that, That's not a bad that, thing. Right? Because the more muscle you have, the more calories your body burns because the muscle is actually gonna help burning fat. So the more muscle you put on, the more you can eat because you're gonna speed up your metabolism. So you wanna build muscle so that you can help speed up your metabolism and lose weight and then do the cardio to strengthen your heart.
but you have to be looking at what your eating lifestyle is because doing those things alone, it's just, it's not sustainable. Like you're not gonna be able to, like I had a giant steak dinner, so let me go to the gym for three hours every right. single time. And then the second you stop that, there comes all the weight, right? Well, if you skip a day, here comes the weight. It becomes that mentality like we're the carb blocker. Right. Where it was like, okay, well, I'm going to eat whatever and it's garbage, but like I'm going to go to the gym. So it's completely fine. It's like right. it didn't happen. Right. That's not true. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Shannon said, welcome home. I enjoyed the information in this video. Can you please suggest an amount as well as a fat and amount for making a keto chow shake? I've always made mine using your ice cream recipe and I'd like to try a shake. So what liquid works? Okay, so fats. Okay, and there are a lot of videos. We have a couple of videos about this. Chris has a couple of videos about this. So if you, when it comes to fats, you can use almost anything. Yeah. I mean, so- Bacon you, grease. You can use bacon grease. If I wouldn't use bacon grease with chocolate toffee. No. Right? But for, the, for most of the sweet ones, if you're gonna do the sweet ones, melted butter is our favorite. Um, there, it's a, there's a couple of extra steps, which we'll talk about, but melted butter, you can use heavy cream, um, coconut oil, uh, coconut oil, you have to do a little extra thing as well, avocado oil, so pretty much anything you can think of, MCT oil, but that could cause some bathro pyrotechnics that you may not want. Right. Um, as far as amounts, that's the beauty of keto chow is you get to determine the amount based on what is your nutritional goal. So if you're doing it for say, if let's say you, you're doing one shake a day and that meal you want at 500 calories. Each keto chow shake is roughly 125 calories. Now I'm a rounder, I am not a measurer. Some people like Chris, they wanna measure Besides. everything. Like, you know, if you get a bag of keto chow, which we don't have any here, but if you get a bag of keto chow, can you grab one of those sample packets though? Sure. If you grab a bag of keto chow, it's gonna come with a scooper. Root beer. Okay. <laughs> Newman. It comes with a scooper. And you're gonna see a lot of recipes or things say one scoop. One scoop is actually identical to this. Yeah. The difference is this is the precise amount. It is weighed out. So this one is 1 1.6 ounces or how many grams is that? 48.54 grams. If you think I'm gonna pull out a scale and measure out 48.54 grams not. with a scooper, I'm not. So the scoop is close, but it's not necessarily precise. Right. So, but for example, this package is 125 calories. I'm gonna round it up. So if I go my my meal to be, you know, roughly 500 calories, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of butter. That would be 400 calories plus this, that's 525. I'm never going three and a third tablespoons. I'm going three tablespoons or four tablespoons or like two ounces or three, I'm never getting that precise. Some people want to. Absolutely. And Keto Chow actually has a calculator for that. So number one, determine how many calories do you want your meal. So right. if you want, Rachel wants her meal to be roughly 400 calories. She does three tablespoons of butter or three ounces of heavy cream along with one serving of keto chow, that's gonna bring it to 400, 425 calories. Now some people mix the liquid they use, I mean we use water. Mm -hmm. Some people use coffee. almond milk, some people use coffee. I find that, especially if you're using the butter on the, the sweet flavors and let it sit for a little bit, that flavor comes so enhanced. A lot of times we connect adding milk with it creating more flavor. So like if I have almond milk, I'm gonna create like a creamier, richer flavor to the keto chow. It doesn't need it. The right. water and the butter really do the job so well. Yeah, now if you are curious of the difference, heavy cream is gonna make it thicker. Right. Okay, but it mutes the flavor. Which I is weird. butter enhances the flavor, but it's not quite as thick. So yes. maybe you wanna add just a touch of xanthan gum, not a lot, just like an eighth of a teaspoon. Yeah. That'll help thicken it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, now if you need to, if you're gonna use butter, Chris has lots of videos on how to do butter, but the key is you have to melt the butter and then you have to use warm water and it's gotta be warm enough for the butter to stay melted. But not cooked. If you don't put in warm water, what's gonna happen is, is the butter's gonna start to solidify. So you're gonna go melted butter, warm water. I go warm to almost hot, like to where I can just get my finger in there. You don't wanna go boiling because then you're affecting your vitamins. Right. Put it in your blender, add your keto chow, blend it really good. It won't work put in a blender bottle. It won't work in a blender bottle, okay? If, you can try 
but it's gonna you're gonna have your arm's gonna fall off because what it is is the acacia gum that's in the keto chow becomes an emulsifier yes and allows everything to mix and now that butter won't solidify now if you do happen to take it out of the refrigerator the next day and there's chunks in there then you didn't mix it well Take the blender ball out or dump it yes. in. Be- even better, because you don't want to heat anything in plastic, dump it into a glass Pyrex right. bowl. Heat it up for a little bit and then let that butter remelt and then blend it again. And you can put it back in the refrigerator you want or you can just drink it warm and that will get rid of that chunkiness. Yeah. Okay, so that's what it is though. Choose the fat. First choose your calories and then add the amount of fat to bring it up, keeping in mind that every keto chow is between 115 to 140 calories per flavor. Yeah. Okay? Next one is from Virginia. Hey, Virginia. She says, thanks for the info on hair loss. I am using collagen, eating fat, and gristle off the meat. My arthritis is so much better, but I still want to sleep 24-7 and not a lot of energy. I am more alert when I am awake. Um, Electrolytes. Yeah. Most likely. Again, it's not in all the cases, but if you're eating properly, if you're getting your collagen, that's going to help with your protein because none of us are getting enough protein in. Uh, if you're feeling tired and lethargic, most likely you are missing electrolytes. Yeah. Use your Keto Chow Mineral Drops, your Keto Chow um, Daily Electrolytes. Relight. Uh, Relight. Redmond Relight. Perfect Keto's got one. We kind of use all of them. Um, 4,000 milligrams a day of potassium, about 4,000 milligrams a day of sodium, about 300 milligrams of magnesium. That's going to give you lots of energy. Anytime I need energy, the first thing I do is grab like a Zip Fizz or squirt a big thing of Keto Chow uh, Mineral Drops in my mouth because that's going to just give me all that potassium and stuff that I need. Yeah, it'll give you the boost. Let's take one more commercial break and then we'll come back with our Facebook comments. Okay. Have I told you lately that I love you? Are you done? Maybe. Okay, let's get into our Facebook family group comments. And the first one is from Shell. Hey, Shell. She said, I wanted to go jogging, but Proverbs 28 1 says, The wicked run when no one is chasing them. So there's that. Oh my goodness. It was a meme she put up, and I just had to put it in here for you. I love that so hard. I try to avoid running. I love walking, but like, yes, I'm I'm with you on that. But it's because I look so crazy when I run. I have a very no comment. I have a very weird stance. <laughs> it's not cute. It's just, it looks hysterical. Okay, next one is from Becky. Hey Becky. Becky says does anybody know if I can order chicken skins from a grocery store? Hubs purchased some chicken skin chips that were amazing, but I can't bring myself to pay $4 a bag for more, even though they were so good. We've actually had those chicken skins. They so are really good. good, except for the ones that we got had feathers on them. That was kind of disheartening. Uh, so we did call around. Now, our favorite place to get them before is No More at Penn Dutch. Yes. Um, but a lot of times what you can do is you can call your local butcher. I, I, don't, I never tried Publix. Most butchers don't sell chicken skins, but we found like we have a place down here called Doris's. You can call them up and say, hey, I'd like to get some chicken skins. Can you save me some? And, and they just will. And go in and talk to the butcher and say like, I'd like some chicken skins. Because what they do is when they sell their boneless, skinless chicken breast, they're getting rid of those chicken skins. Right. So you can a lot of times go in and talk to the local butcher and just say, hey, like I need some chicken skins. When you're doing your next batch of boneless, skinless, will you save them for me? And my experience has been they're more than happy to save it. Penn Dutch used to sell them to me for 20 cents a pound. So that is something you can look into. Go to a local grocery store. But it's a great question, which is why I put it in there. Because there's a lot you can do. Aside from making chips, we make uh, crab rangoon with them. Yeah, using that as the outer shell. And it's delicious. You can make wontons with them. There's so much that you can do with those chicken skins. But use the chicken skin fat. I think too many people try to fry them. You can wrap that thing, wrap it up tight, put it in an air fryer. There's enough fat in chicken skin. You don't need to add any fat to it. It's kind of awesome. Next one is from Susan. Susan says, does anybody have a soda stream machine? I love, love, love seltzer waters. And I'm wondering if it would be more cost effective to do that at home than to keep buying them. Thank you. Um, we actually used to have a soda machine. We did. And uh, it was pretty uh, cost effective until they got rid of the big bottles. They right. Only, they, had the little, they, they had the little ones and the big ones. And then when Bath, Pro, Bath and Body Works, or no, no, Bed Bath and Beyond, yeah. stopped carrying the big ones, we stopped. Then I started filling them myself, which is like another whole experiment. You can do it because it's dry ice. You go and buy dry ice. You open up the top. You drop 
dry ice the same amount of weight down in there and you close it back up and then the dry ice becomes the carbon dioxide. But, so you can do that, but it can be expensive. And it's a chore. It's and, another layer of chore. So it really has to do with like what convenience. If you're like, hey, I've got plenty of time and I don't mind doing it. It's actually fun. Anthony loved having dry ice around. Yeah. Um, then then maybe it's a consideration. But for us, after a while, it seems like every time we ran out was at the perfect intersection of we don't have any more, you know, cartridges to, to do it. It depends really on how much carbonated water you are drinking. For us, we go through a lot. So we would probably go through close to a 12 pack a day between everybody in the house. And so what we just ended up doing is ditching the soda stream and buying whatever seltzer water, carbonated water, whatever is on sale. Generally yeah, no every brand week, loyalty. one of the grocery stores has one of the brands, whether it be a Haas or um, the, um, which one? Now the, I can't even polar. The polar, the bubbly, all the brands. They all, whichever one is on sale, and usually they're on sale a minimum of three for ten, but a lot of times it's buy one get one free, and we just get a whole bunch of whatever's on sale. So we may go through three weeks of having Lacroix, and then we don't see Lacroix for another two months. So that's how we just decided to do it because it just broke down to being cheaper than having to worry about how much seltzer water we have and in the house chances, and how much carbon dioxide we had. Chances are you're not drinking as much seltzer water as we do, so you'll probably even save even more money. Yeah. <laughs> Next one is from Charity. Hey Charity, she says, hey all, I don't normally post much, but I had to share how I ketofied one of my all time favorite dishes my grandma would make, mini meatloaves with cream of mushroom soup and mashed potatoes, cauliflower. I ended up making the soup from scratch after I added the chicken broth. I decided to boil my cauliflower in that for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I scooped out the cauliflower so I could blend that part of the soup before adding the heavy whipping cream. Then I put the cauliflower in the food processor with a softened brick of cream cheese, made the meatloaves with ground pork rinds, and it held together awesome. Together it tastes just like grandma used to make proud of myself okay that is awesome when is dinner i'm coming over what i want to say is why are you not posting because i'm seriously stealing that recipe and doing a video on it come february yes so please post more especially if they're recipes like yeah, that i love that charity <laughs> okay next one is from Lori. hey Lori. Lori said well i just tried my first and last <laughs> sardine <laughs> first and i last. even tried it with hot sauce but it's just not something i want to eat again I'll just continue to get my omega-3s from my eggs. Do you find yourself being bolder on food that you try? I've always been adventurous when it comes to food, and my grandfather always said, try it once so you can find out if you like it. With a few exceptions, I usually will try everything once. Sardines are in the nope pile. I love that, Lori. I love that you're being adventurous. And that is a thing that a lot of times people are like, oh, it gets boring on keto. No, it doesn't. If our fear factor challenges have proven anything, it's that there's a lot of food out there that we didn't even know about. So tell me something that, so I mean, I'm curious, let us know down below. Have you guys gotten adventurous with your eating since starting keto? Is there a food that you have tried that you didn't think you would like and once you tried it on keto that you like is there something that you have tried that you've incorporated or would incorporate more into your diet definitely i i don't want sardines but like things like the kipper mm -hmm. that we never would have tried unless we were just doing the fear factor thing okay i'm all about like i think it's delicious in fact i've joked with joe like i never thought i would have a craving for for fish okay like like i have and even salmon salmon was not something that i grew up eating we just didn't eat it one one thing it was expensive and then it was like the color was weird to me so um yeah definitely salmon and and trying it with different recipes incorporating it like yeah i think it's Time to get adventurous. Yeah. It's, you're going to laugh at what mine is. What? Mine is avocado. So, number one, I always had to think for avocado because what we always taught, don't eat a lot of avocado, it's, it's high in fat, right? Right. How, avocado is bad for you because it's high in fat because we didn't understand the good fat, bad fat kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. But I could never get past the consistency of avocado and especially guacamole. Like, I like really? the taste of guacamole. But that consistency, the mushiness. the mushiness always bothered me and I'm big into consistency. But because it is such a great place to get potassium from, I kind of tried it again and again and now I really enjoy it. And the other thing is the raw eggs. 
the eggs in my drink. Like, definitely new. That is definitely something that I would never have tried pre-keto. Now, again, I'm not going to be like you say, rocking it, drinking that, but putting it into a coffee or putting it into a keto chow shake where it's being blended up and the yolk is becoming an emulsifier. Like, yeah, it's really good. And I like that. I think it's fun, too, to just try doing, like, the fear factor for yourself. Mm -hmm. Get a couple of things. Make it a family they game. They don't have to be spiders. They don't have to be super, super weird. But, like, a family game night mm -hmm. turned into, like, hey, let's see what what's something that we could try with our family. Chicken liver pate. You may discover something that is fun that you want to incorporate. Or you may find, like, we could use this in something else. Yeah, yeah. So we have one more. And that one is going to be from Yvette. Hey, Yvette. And Yvette said, is anyone else struggling with getting back on keto? I've been trying for a few months now and I can't stick it. I'm good one day, bad the next, and sometimes only good for breakfast. I've gained back 30 pounds. I know what needs to be done. I just can't seem to stick to it. I hate how this is a pattern for me every time I lose weight. I hate how I look and how I feel. But the sugar goodies have such a hold of me. If anybody is having the same issues, I would love it if we could help each other. Maybe a daily text or even a daily phone call if needed. Yvette, I absolutely love that idea because we're all struggling in our own way to stay on track. Whether it is you're trying to avoid something, avoid a type of food, or you're trying to stick to some like movement goals, it's not easy for anybody. Yeah nobody is having an easy time of it. And I think that it's very important not to allow yourself to be on an island doing this alone. Mm -hmm. So we all have something to contribute. I think we should tie our rowboats together. Yeah. And I think that that is great. So if you're somebody who's like, hey, I would like to have an accountability partner, we can do this just like Elfster, right? right. People who wanted to participate in that, put that in the Facebook family group or visit our discord so that you could have a daily check-in there are some people that are like able like their their schedules allow them to be in discord or in the family group at certain times of the day and they may be the apart you know the accountability partner that you need um i do think just as another layer for her specific situation one of the things that i know that i want to maintain in the this coming year is grocery shopping once a week not on the daily and that mm -hmm. is something that i talked about in this week's this past week's fearless friday is if you allow yourself to switch up what you're eating by going to the store with that hunger every day and i mean we live very close to a grocery store so right. i could say like, like here's half a mile walking distance exactly i can walk over there and if i had a goal of i'm going to eat this for the you know for my day but I could change it halfway through the day, what I'm craving is going to be what I go and purchase. So I think if you say to yourself, like, I am not going to the grocery store but once a week. Right. So whatever I've purchased, that's it. That's right. So I can't, you know, allow a craving spring up and me go and order something from Instacart or order something from, you know, DoorDash or one of these like Uber Eats. It has to be what I purchased for the week. And right. maybe I can switch up like, hey, if I purchased chicken and ground beef and turkey and, and I planned on eating it Monday, but now I'm going to switch it up and reverse it and I'm going to eat it Tuesday. But it's still like those are the only groceries we're working with. Right. And that may help. Yeah. I just want to say that you can do this. Okay. Yes. We've all struggled with things. You can do this. Here's what I want you to do. I really want you to go join our Discord. It's completely free. Okay, go join the Discord. There's always somebody in there. You can say, I'm struggling. Like, just think about it as a hotline. And also with the Discord, you can send private messages. Okay, if you if you find somebody you want to talk to, just send them up, say, hey, is it okay if I send you a private message and then not everybody has to read it or something right. like that? And it could even make it a little bit more anonymous than, you know, like a Facebook or something like that yes. if you want. So that's why we set that up there. It's just another layer of accountability. But I really want you to go join Discord event. You've got this. You can handle this. You can do it. We've all struggled and somebody's going to be able to really help you and walk you through it and be that, you know, hand holder that you need. Yeah. yeah. And we all need it. Yeah. So that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. 
please make sure you answer all the different questions we had, like what is something that you've overcome? Mm -hmm. And uh, leave all of that down below in the comment section. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you're ready for this Thursday. We will have our uh, weekly Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. live stream right here on the channel. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget about tomorrow, checking in for what is the Keto Chow special deal that Chris won't tell me what it is. I'm so, so excited. I'm kind of excited to find out what it is. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, there are 97 more Keto on the Couches and in every one of them, Rachel has a different hairstyle. That is true. And probably a different hair color too. Almost to 100. So go ahead and check those out right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find right over here. But you know, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we have a new keto on the couch, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week, bye. bye.